Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live chat. I'm Angela Walters. So excited to be touching base with you again. Um, right before I go live, we type chat and I was uh, spending a couple minutes typing and answering questions and it was just so fun to feel like I'm getting to know everybody and I'm so glad that you all are joining me for these weekly chats. It's just so much fun. A couple things, next week there will be no live chat. So no live chat next Thursday. Almost every Thursday I co come live and talk about quilting. But next Thursday, right before Christmas, I am sure I'm gonna be doing some mad dash shopping because I'm not quite done with my holiday shopping. Um, but I will be back on December 30th. So I'm looking forward to picking that right back up and diving into more quilting. If you ever wonder where to find the live chats, you can always go to my YouTube channel and there is upcoming live chats. There's link to, links to them there, but they're always on Thursday at 3 p.m. Central, so very much fun. Um, a couple other things real quick before we get into all this stuff. If you ordered a Feather Meander Training Wheels kit, I'm so sorry, we're waiting on fabric. It should be here any day, and as soon as it comes in, we'll send it out. So thank you for your patience on that. And if you like any of the free quilting diagrams, any of the videos or tutorials, I hope that you'll give the video a thumbs up because that just helps other quilters find it as well. I totally appreciate that. And for anybody that was in that crazy storm weather pattern that took up most of the US, hope everybody's doing well. And I hope everybody is um, enjoying the holiday season. I know this is my one of my favorite times of year. All right, and since it's my favorite time of year, I thought let's do a free motion challenge while we're at it. So we are, well at past halfway of our fabulous feathers free motion challenge we only have two more videos left isn't that crazy i feel like we have been talking about this video series for a long time but we're finally making progress and coming close to that finish line if you aren't able to participate right now as we're going live no worries these videos stay available um, on my youtube channel so you can pop back in whenever you're whenever you're ready for it there is no stress no pressure um, and so uh, this week we learned how to quilt feathers in irregularly shaped areas. And if there's any English um, professors out there, I think I'm saying that right, irregularly shaped areas. Sometimes I'll say irregular areas. I don't think that's quite right, but we know what I'm talking about, right? We're talking about quilting feathers in any kind of area that isn't well suited for feathers. Now, here's the thing. If you love quilting feathers, there's a chance you can fit it on almost any area of your quilt. And so I kind of broke it down to three different techniques that you could use to fill in those areas. And I always try to show like different options and different, different techniques because I know that not everybody has the same preferences. Even when we were chatting, type chatting, some people were saying, oh, I hate the feather meander. Well, maybe they weren't saying it quite like that. Um, or they were saying, oh, those motifs, everybody has different designs or different types of designs that are easier or more difficult. So um, it, I would try to show a range. In the very first one, we're gonna jump to pictures in just a second, but in the very first one, I talk about auditioning your designs. I kind of talk about you know knowing where you're gonna place them. And I just wanna talk about that for just a second because that's something I couldn't really expand on in the tutorial. When it comes to quilting your quilts with any designs, not just feathers, being aware of where you put those elements will really help you be more satisfied with the end result. If I know that a feather is gonna draw attention to itself, I'm not gonna put it around my least favorite block of the quilt. That's just not gonna make sense, right? That's like putting eyeliner around my zits. I don't do that, I shouldn't do that. Um, so sometimes auditioning them before you start will help give you some options or some things to think about. It's not something I do all the time now because I can look at a quilt and kind of visually guess where it would be. But in the beginning, trying out different placements and auditioning, auditioning those different designs might be a little bit more helpful for you. In the video, I showed preview paper. So I showed how you can put the plastic down and you can draw out your design. Um, this is a great option for those of you that want to see it real life size. And then also to kind of practice through the design itself. One thing I couldn't put in the tutorial I didn't have time for is if you mark out your design on the preview paper and you love it, you think that's a great design, you can take it to your sewing machine, take the thread out of your needle, and actually quilt along those lines to perforate the design. And then you can use your pounce pad to mark that out nice and quickly. So not only can it be an auditioning tool, it can also be um, a stencil type of tool. But you don't have to have preview paper to audition your designs. If you have any kind of drawing app on your phone or your tablet, that's a great way to do it, or just a good old piece of paper. I can't tell you how many times I've been sitting in some business meeting or school function and I'm kind of doodling out designs. When you're auditioning it, it doesn't have to be exact. Like you don't have to think, oh, this is exactly the scale. That I, it doesn't have to be exact. It's just to help 
you get an idea of where things go. So just know that when I talk about auditioning designs, it's not like this long drawn out like artistic process, like, oh, I just wanna audition it. No, it's just to help you have an idea of where you're gonna put them. Um, especially for those of you that are quilting on a sewing machine or larger vertical areas on your long arm, because it's kind of hard to see beyond where you're at right then. And so auditioning the designs will give you a road map to kind of follow. Another thing to talk about is marking your designs. And I tried to show a range, right? I tried to show you can mark out the whole element, everything if you want to, or you could just mark the guideline if you'd like, just your spine, or you can just you know go for it without marking it. So the trick here with this technique and any quilting technique I talk about is you really gotta find what works for you. I can only tell you what works for me, and I'm only the expert in my opinion, um, but you can do what works for you. So just try different things, and you'll quickly figure out what works better for you. That's what's great about quilters, and also kind of difficult about teaching quilting, is everybody has different preferences, different skill levels, different machines. So we're gonna try to encourage you to make it fit yourself, right? Quilting is so much fun. I don't want you to stress out about it, so trying to make it enjoyable will make it enjoyable. All right, so let's get to the pictures. Let's kind of recap what we talked about. Um, but first, I got to talk about this. Oh, when I was quilting this quilt for Tula Pink, if you um, didn't know, she, uh, she does live Instagram chats on Tuesdays. And I quilted this quilt for her a while ago. And I was hoping against hope that she would release that video or talk about it before the Feather Motifs video came out in the challenge, but just missed it just a bit. So I couldn't feature this in the vid video tutorial. Um, so I just want to take a second and talk about this right here. When I was quilting the quilt for her, one thing I love about working with Tula is she just lets me do whatever I want. And I, I always try to do really, really cool stuff to beat the last one I did for her. And so this quilt was so adorable and so darling, like little acorns. I, I mean, I'm like, where do you come up with this? This is so genius. And she did give me a little bit of like um, a help. She's like, I, I kind of like cross hatching in in the acorns. And the idea being the fabric was the most important thing. And so nothing too ornate to take away from the fabric. And you know, I love her if I'm putting cross hatch in anything. That's not anything I love to do, um, but I'll do it for her. But when I try to decide what am I going to put around these, it was very difficult because there wasn't a whole lot of space between those acorns. I mean, there's a lot of space, but not enough for a feather wreath on each one. Or I was thinking maybe a feather that could kind of wrap around and look like it's going behind, but there was just not enough room for that. And then it hit me as I was preparing for this challenge. I'm like, oh, I could do a feather motif. And so if you have watched that video, you already have kind of seen how this goes together. And I love that you can get something so complex with just the same basic idea. So you can see the center is the very bottom of that acorn. It's just that little pointy oval. And then my spine kind of wraps up along the acorn. I want it to kind of look like a little wreath or a little like, I don't know, cute little um, frame around it. For some reason, I kind of get the idea of like a little logo or something, I don't know. And then I e echoed it and then added my petals up the side. So there's no top to my center, there's just the one. And I'm only putting petals on one side of that line. But another thing that I did that I thought was kind of clever, okay, I'm gonna pause real quick. You have to know that I am so easily amused by things. It's it's annoying. It's probably a little embarrassing because I'm like, oh, that is so cute. Oh, look at that. And other people are like, you're crazy. Um, but I love how I at the top I kind of ran out of spine, and I didn't have enough room to really make that spine go all the way up around the acorn because of that cute little stem. So I quilted the last few petals as though they were going behind the acorn. Now, if you watch this week's tutorial, tutorial, you've seen how I do that, except it's just kind of flipped. Instead of cutting off the round tips like I did in the tutorial, here I'm kind of cutting off the bottom. And it just, I feel like, makes that acorn like pop off of there and gives it a really cool effect. Again, if you watch the, motive, the motif video, you know exactly how this went together. And so I think it's really fun that um, you can create different variations as well. Another thing I want to point out is in the little caps, I experimented with different shapes. You know, I had some scallops in one and a different kind of geometric shape. But again, I, the feather is the, the main thing, so nothing too ornate in the rest of the quilt, even though I did quilt it to death in the background. Tula likes her quilting really, really dense, and so I love to, to do that. I couldn't put a wreath around each acorn, though, because there wasn't quite enough room. I knew that if I tried to fit them all and give them each one, 
it would have kind of like compacted and made them smaller. And I didn't want that feather to be too small. I want it to be more of a statement. So in the end, I ended up alternating between the two and then just opting for a simple outline in every other one. Now, this is where we kind of see the idea that you can use those motifs or feathers to draw attention to an area or, you know, kind of highlight. If I, if I had pieced this and I only liked a couple of the blocks, then I would only put that wreath around my favorites. Or I could have made a different pattern by maybe just putting it around some of the outside ones. So just know that your placement with any of these designs is going to help really um, draw your attention to areas. And uh, I think it's a great example of a quick and easy motif. Uh, easy in that it's not overly complicated. Once you get the hang of it, it's, it's pretty easy. And it just really does exactly what I wanted to do, which is highlight those adorable little acorns. So again, I know it doesn't fit with this week's chat, but I just wanted to show that because she finally did it on her live video and I was so excited to talk about it. And she was so sweet. Um, so I decided to thank her for her sweet words. All right, let's go back now to what we're supposed to be talking about, which is this week's um, free motion challenge video quilting those feathers in those irregularly shaped areas. And again, three different techniques. And so this was the biggest section that we've, we're gonna quilt in the whole challenge. I and mean, there's a lot of quilting here. And so just take your time, have fun with it. There's no stress about getting it done by next week. I mean, Christmas is coming up, I know we're busy. But I wanted to talk about how can we fill in anything that's not our standard square, rectangle, something that's just a little different. So I actually have some quilted samples and we're gonna talk about the different techniques. So the first one was, instead of trying to fit a long continuous feather in the area, we're gonna break it up into sections. Easy, easy technique. If you know how to quilt a feather, then breaking it up into sections is perfect. Especially for those of us that are on those uh, sewing machines or those small throated machines. One of the questions that was asked in the live type chat was, you know, how do you get, the hang of quilting on a sewing machine and having all this, you know, quilt. Well, handling an area while you're there makes it a lot easier. And so I can fit those sections and still get really cool effects. So you could put your sections to where they come out of an area to draw attention to it, or you can quilt them the same direction to kind of give you this continuous look, which I did here in that yellowish pink area. Again, the sections that you quilt can be any size. I mean, it depends on your skill level, your preferences, the machine, you know the deal. Um, it also depends on how comfortable you feel about it. So you can add as many or as few, and that's exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about auditioning your designs. What works for you? Um, you can't look at the quilting I did and say, oh, I've got to do it just like that, because that's no fun. you got to make it fit yourself. And then once you position your um, feather sections or you decide where you're going to put them, you're going to quilt those first and then fill in afterwards. That hasn't been asked a whole lot this time around, but that is a question that used to come up a lot when I would travel and teach. Um, which goes first, you know, the feather or the filler? The main element always goes first because the filler is going to fill around it. So I'm gonna quilt my section and then fill in around it. And what you put around it is what's gonna determine whether it's gonna highlight that feather or hide it. And I didn't have a chance to go into this too much and you're just gonna have to take my word for it. But if you quilt your feather and you're like, oh, I don't love it, or you don't want it to be such a main focal point of your quilt, use filler that is similar in size as your feather and it will help it all blend in. So if I quilted those two sections in the pink and in the yellow and my petals were about an inch apart, I would do a nice big swirl with my lines about an inch apart and then when I'm done, it's all gonna blend into each other. But more likely you're gonna quilt your feather and you're gonna be like, dang, that's awesome. Then using a filler that's smaller will help provide contrast and really make that feather pop off. And if you really, really love it, you can add some echoing just to help separate it from the rest. So by quilting your section first and then deciding what you're putting around it, it kind of gives you a little bit of freedom to highlight or hide elements that you might not like. And so the first section, I did the custom feather or the yellow one you saw, and now this one is in the blue, it's the basic feather. This technique works with either kind of feather, it doesn't matter. So whichever one you feel more comfortable quilting, go for it. In fact, somebody, I think it was Mary Rose, said that she tends to all <laughs> switch between petals in the same feather, um, basic and her uh, custom, perfect. If you do it once, just keep doing it. That's your own variation, I love it. So it works with any type of feather. So this is nice if 
you want to learn a different technique. You already feel comfortable with a feather. You don't have to try to learn a new feather and a new technique. Um, so again, the basic feather, a little shorter here, and the other one was a little bit longer. So it just, it just gives you an example of different effects. All right, so here we see the auditioning of it, um, just a screenshot from the video. And the idea being, you know, sometimes you're not sure where you want it to go. It, you have to take the whole quilt into account. Even though on the sample that I do for the challenge, I'm showing four different techniques or three different techniques. So I wouldn't necessarily do all three in that area, right? I might just do one. So auditioning that design and kind of finding what you like is going to be a great way to go about it. Sometimes when you're positioning your sections, it's going to be pretty obvious where they need to go. Right? It, there's going to be like nowhere really for it to go except here, or it might be like pretty obvious where this is where it should go to you. So if you have your blocks on point and you're setting triangles, this is going to be a perfect way to quilt your feathers in sections and kind of help give it a little bit of that continuous look. Um, it's just going to help kind of keep that direction going instead of a motif, which would kind of draw your attention right here. So I'm trying to show this as an abstract example of the different effects you would get, whether it was a motif or a design. This is also something I love to do in large borders or on my long arm. Quilting long vertical feathers is no fun on a long arm because I'd have to advance back and forth and I don't love that. So because I don't love it, I don't do it. But we can see in this red and white quilt, this border was huge. And we actually saw this last week in the live chat. But if you look along the border, you'll see these big sections of feathers and they just kind of run into one edge and run into the other edge. Well, why would I do it like that? Because I can have a clear start and stop point as I'm progressing down my quilt. Um, it just makes it a lot easier. And so when I quilted this, it was on my Avante. I have an 18 inch throat. So all of my feather sections were about 16 inches, right? That's basically the whole reasoning behind it. Again, same on a sewing machine. I can quilt that section and then move on. So you can use it to break up those really large areas and, and make it easier to manage. Once I figured that out, I was like, oh, I don't hate quilting borders as near as much as I used to. <laughs> and we also saw this quilt last week when we talked about the motifs around the outside, but this time we're kind of focusing on that white background around the star. And again, quilting the uh, feathers in sections gives me that wrap around effect, that continuous effect. Keeping them going the same direction does that. If I wanted to quilt it slightly different, I could have quilted my sections to look like they're coming out of the star, but I decided to kind of give it this framing effect. If you look at the diamond, I know my hand is not gonna help, but there's only a little bit of white space at the points and a lot more over here. If I had tried to like make my feather fit, it just wouldn't have looked right. And so just quilting it in sections made it a lot easier. So sometimes it's easier to do and it just looks really cool. I mean, you don't have to tell people though that it's easier. All right, how about the, it's quite so obvious at first, but if you see where I have the plumes coming out kind of at an angle and up to the top, that was my first section. It's just a little bit longer than I've been, do, been showing up to this point. And then the feathers that look like they're coming from the center like antenna, those are just two separate sections going the same direction and giving it that look like they're going behind each other. The only difference here is I have several sections going different ways and keeping them the same direction or keeping each one kind of go in the same direction helps kind of um, emphasize that effect I was going for. But if you think about it, all these sections fit within the throat space of my machine. It was easier to quilt it this way than it would be to do something different. So even though it looks complex and ornate, and I, and it, I think it is beautiful, it was also an easier option than maybe something else because I could break that feather up into sections and then quilt it. So sometimes we'll have that wonderful situation that happens where it's actually easier to quilt one way, but it looks harder. I love it, love it, love it, love it. So breaking it up into sections. Sometimes it won't be obvious where those feathers should come from. I'm actually gonna back up, I wanna show here. So all of these feather sections originate from the piecing, right? Cause my feather has to start somewhere. So I usually have it start along a seam, whether it's along the edge of the quilt or whether it's, you know, um, coming out of a block. So here it's, it's pretty straightforward. That's where I want to come from. But sometimes there won't be that obvious starting point, right? There won't be an obvious place to have it come out of. And so this big feather section is kind of separate from a motif because it's not self-contained. It's just a, a segment of a feather, but I have it kind of coming out of other quilting or coming out of the filler. Now this 
is not very is not as difficult as you might think. Basically, I marked my spine and I quilted my filler to get to it and then went into my feather. So a little bit of a backtrack on the idea that you have to quilt your segment first, but basically I'm using the filler to create my starting point and then going into it and then filling in around it. I love how it looks like it's kind of coming out of that background quilting. Um, again, it's only about this big, so it's gonna fit within the throat of my machine, but it looks stunning and adds a little bit of a flourish to it. So if you ever see a quilt I've quilted, most often, I'll say 90% of the time, you can look at it and figure, I did it that way because it was easier. I just made it look like it wasn't. All right, the second technique, we went to the continuous feather. Sometimes you gotta do the hard stuff, right? Sure, breaking it up into segments gives you that cool look, but sometimes you do want that continuous feather. Maybe you want to wrap around something, help direct your eye somewhere. It just looks beautiful, one big continuous feather. But if you're dealing with those irregular areas, sometimes it can be tricky to like, you know, know how to manage that. And so the second technique was to fit it in. Let's make it fit. And I don't know if I did a really good job of explaining this in the video, but basically the idea is, I'm gonna make it fit the narrowest part and then use the filler to fill in the rest. Um, sometimes, I'll show you an example here in a second. But the idea being that I'm gonna make it fit the narrowest part. So this is really gonna work best in background areas or irregularly shaped areas that don't have extreme differences in width. If I have a lot of really different widths, if I take the narrowest part, then I'm gonna have just a puny little feather. So it's gonna be something where that irregular area isn't drastically different, but just enough that it's kind of a pain. So I showed in there how you're gonna quilt your spine and you're gonna add your petals. The one, I won't say draw back to this, but the one um, thing to consider is I'm working my way along the whole quilt for one line. And so sometimes I won't pick that option because I don't want to have to advance my quilt or reposition for one line. So you, there's variations that you can create. I won't go into that, but just know that if you decide to put it in there, it's going to look stunning and it's, it's going to be worth the effort. So just know that that's kind of the difference between the two. Um, I was trying to think, where would you use this? I want to show real life examples because it might be hard to think, where would I actually put that? I would use a feather that fits that irregular area if the irregularly shaped area <laughs> is part of the quilt. It's a, an area that I wanna highlight. It's not just the space in between two different designs. It's a component of the quilt itself. And this was a perfect example. I had quilted this quilt. It's the Ditto Quilt Pattern by uh, Julie Herman of Jaybird Quilts. And it's pieced to create that irregularly looking area. The difference here is I just quilted the petals so that they extended all the way to the edge. That's definitely an option too. You don't have to you know, keep it the same size, but I could have just quilted it one size and added filler. So you just know that this is perfect for areas that you don't wanna necessarily like, it's, it's a highlight, it's a central part of the quilt. Um, so an example there, and just a little bit closer. So a closer picture. Again, the feather just fits that area. It kind of highlights that irregular shape. And I, I love that kind of element. I'm alternating it with an easier design because let's be honest, that space in between the two feathers is a little too small for a feather, so I just did a wishbone or a ribbon candy. So that would be a good option. Another option to use this technique is if you're filling in an irregularly shaped area that is jagged around the edges. I had a really hard time saying that correctly when I was filming. I'm like, it's just a jagged edge. It's not, this shape is mostly rectangular, but it's a little jagged around the edge. And so keeping the feather to the narrowest size and then using filler just helps kind of even that out because it's difficult to try to quilt a feather within all those little those sections. It can be done, and I have done it, but sometimes you wanna just take it easier on yourself and use filler to fill in any of the gaps. If you think about it, like that's kind of the whole, whole secret to anything I've ever taught. Just make sure there's no gaps, use the filler design to fill it in. And by the way, right before I went live, a lot of people were type chatting fillers for the next challenge. So they're requesting that. I think that would be fun. We can do um, fillers from A to Z or just a ton of fillers. So, I did see that and I'll, I'll definitely have to do that. All right, and then a little bit closer. Again, same feather, same idea, but just any of those gaps, I'm just filling it in. Now I did a dense back and forth line because I really loved making that feather pop, but if, if it was less of an element or I didn't want it to you know, take away from the fabric, then I could have just done something different. And you can actually combine the two. Now you're like, dang it, I don't need more things to think about, but you can. You can quilt it in sections and fill in that irregular, irregular area. And this particular quilt um, features my second ever fabric collection, and it's 
called roots. But anyway, in the light green, I quilted the feathers. They're actually in sections. I know it's hard to see. This is an older picture. But it's kind of quilted in a section, but it fills that irregular shape, that kind of hexagon shape, and just draws attention to it. So again, another example of when you'd want to fit in that feather. So that was technique number two. But then we did my favorite, my all-time favorite technique number three, peekaboo feathers. And the idea being they kind of disappear and come back like peekaboo, um, which I thought was super clever until I had to say it when I was filming. And I'm like, this just sounds weird, but we'll just embrace it. So the idea being, if you have an area that has drastic difference in widths and quilting your feather smaller and bigger will be distracting, then you can make it look like it's going behind something. It is actually a lot easier than you might think. And I was asking during the type chat, like, did you think that was easier than you thought? Like, it seems like it would be difficult, but basically we're just quilting part of the pedal and using traveling to get to the next. The hardest part is envisioning where it would come out of. So the idea being we're not quilting the whole pedal, we're just quilting part of it, and it's gonna give it this look like it's going behind that element or like it's disappearing. Um, such fun. I'd I think it's kind of like a party trick because it looks difficult, but it's not. All right, this is a couple of screenshots from the expanded resources PDF. So I kind of break it down step by step in the expanded resource because I know that it might be hard to visualize when I'm actually quilting it. But the idea being, I'm going to mark my spine and I'm going to mark my guideline that echoes it a couple inches away. Um, you could mark all your petals out if you want, or you could just mark the guidelines. It's up to you. But then I'm going to start quilting my petals so that they extend all the way to that line. But where that line runs off the edge is where I'm going to quilt along my line and then I'm gonna stop, travel, and come back. So you can see in that dashed line, this is where the feather petals would be if I quilted it all the way to that line, but since I'm stopping at my seam, then I'm using the traveling to bring it in. And here you can kind of see a little bit closer. Now, the one thing I want to point out, see a little arrow, if my feather just comes off of the edge a little bit, you're not really gonna notice, I'll just, quilt it like a regular petal. So it doesn't have to be like so strict to that, that reference line. Um, we're gonna, gonna make it easy on ourselves. So you can definitely have a little wiggle room there. It might feel like when you're this close to it, you're like, oh, they're gonna see that. I'm telling you, when you step back, they're just gonna see that overall effect, I promise. And so it's, it's a fun and easy way to do that. Um, and then here you can see, once you take away the quilted line or the marked lines, then you have that feather that looks like it's going behind the area. Here's the thing I would suggest. If you're wanting to try this and you're nervous, it's not quite like what you thought. Just try a couple. Start quilting them like they're going behind. And if all this, if it feels a little too overwhelming, just go to your regular petals. Quilt them to the edge of the area. You can add just a few that peek, you know, peekaboo and see how you feel. It doesn't have to be something you have to commit to for the whole feather. So don't, don't stress yourself out about that. This is actually the first quilt I ever quilted with this technique. So this was Spiked Punch by Tula Pink um, featuring, oh, I think it's Nightshade fabric collection, but this has been a long time ago. And th there was a lot of drastic widths to that background area. She had specifically requested creepy feathers. And I'm like, well, the creepy part is I don't know where to put them. There's not a lot of background area. And that's why I thought I can just make them look like they're peeking in and out. Now, this has been, I think, 2012. It's been a long time. So this is the only picture I actually took. So you're going to have to kind of look real close. But the idea being I have my spine I quilted my petals out and then just use traveling to come back to it. The main difference with this though is the spine itself is traveling off the area. So the example for the challenge, we kept the spine in the area just because it's a little bit easier, but your spine itself can go off. You're just going to follow the lines like, they, like you would if they were there and use traveling. So it's a little bit more to think about if you take it to that next level, but it's definitely really cool. And so to show you a couple examples of that, I kind of had to limit myself because I have so many examples. This is how I, I love to do this feather. Um, I love to use it on the outside of quilts and outer of parts of quilts, especially if there's not a border because it gives me that look of a border. But I like the petals running off the edge because then I don't have to shrink that feather down. It kind of gives me that wrapping effect. And so here for Atula's Bjorn Bear, we can see it kind of goes down and then the petals start looking like they're going behind the face of the bear. I don't know if it's just me. Again, I'm easily amused, but I really do think it makes it look like the feathers are going behind. It gives a little bit of depth to the quilt. Um, I don't have a degree in art, so don't take that as a hard and fast 
artistic fact, but um, that's what I kind of think. And here you can see, again, the spine itself is running up behind the bear and then coming back to the next one. If you find yourself trying this and you're not sure where to go, just stop, think about where you need to go next and get there, whether that's traveling or echoing or, or just breaking thread and starting a new line of quilting. It's so much fun, I think you're gonna love it. Again, I know this is not the best picture, but this is from the book that we wrote together, Quilt with Tula and Angela. And um, you know, you have these big, beautiful skulls. Well, what says skulls like feathers, right? <laughs> but I wanted the feathers, again, there's not a lot of room out there around those um, uh, skulls. So I quilted a nice big feather and just made it look like it's coming behind, but also going over some of the blocks. So you can be intentional. If you want that feather to purposely cross over a boundary, no problem, it's, it looks awesome. Make sure it looks intentional. Do it by quite a bit. So if you look at that middle skull up towards the center of his head, that feather really comes down and then comes up. So if you're gonna do it, just make sure it looks intentional. You don't wanna make it look like you messed up. So you can make it go over and behind, do all sorts of things. It's like a, a choose your own quilting adventure. This is a little uh, mini quilt that Julie Herman, Jaybird Quilts, made. And again, I love to use this to fit in feathers in areas that I couldn't normally fit in a feather. If you think about it, I love how it wraps around it. It kind of makes it pop out. Again, along the edge of the quilt is one of my favorite places to do this, especially when there's not a border. Um, and then the spine kind of wiggles off and on. And you can mark that, off if, mark that out if you'd like. And then those little petals look like they're going behind those blocks. So, I didn't want to necessarily make it look like the feather was going over the blocks because the thread is such a contrasting color, it would be a little bit more obvious than it was with the skulls. So that would be another thing to think about, the thread color you're quilting them in. And then here's just another picture of that um, feather going uh, behind the head, again, in my sections. As I work my way down the vertical, if I'm quilting this on a long arm, I can just break it up, make it a little bit easier. But if I'm gonna do it on the verticals, I wanna make sure it looks intentional, so I'm gonna do it on the top and bottom as well. So um, I wanna make sure I do it in all areas of the quilt. And again, just another example. I wish so much I had taken some progress pictures of this. This would be very helpful right now, but I didn't. Um, when I quilt her quilts, I love to just get in the groove and quilt. But now you know how I did that, right? It's not even, not even that you know, awesome. It's just making it play peekaboo, going behind some of the blocks and out in front of others, and then using my filler to fill in around it. And one last example of this, actually I think I have two more. So this was from the Midnight Quilter, uh, Midnight Stars. And again, it has a border, but the border's a little thinner. I designed it, so I did that to myself, but I really still want to quilt those big, beautiful feathers. If you think about it, feathers look better when they're bigger and they take up more room. So the filler, you don't have to quilt quite as much filler. And so here you can see a little bit of that. I've quilted my section, it's just in one section. It's kind of crossing over, it's crossing over by quite a bit to make it look intentional, and I'm just kind of fitting it in there and then using filler to fill in any of those irregular spaces. So again, same basic technique, just a different application. I think that's what's so fun about quilting. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be difficult. And then this one is the last one. This is a little sign for Jaybird, uh, Julie Herman that I made, or she made it and I quilted it. Again, I wanted this big, beautiful feather to kind of wrap around, but there wasn't a lot of room at the top and bottom. There was more room on the sides. So I just made those petals look like they were going behind the letters, giving it a little bit of look of depth and then using my filler to fill it in. Again, if you want it to be super symmetrical or you want it, you know, you're wanting to get this certain effect, you can mark out that spine, um, but you don't have to mark out all the petals. You'll still get that same beautiful look. And then making the feather quilting design, go behind the feather on the quilt. I'm telling you, feathers on feathers. Again, it just helps it pop off there and look really nice. So perfect example of using those kind of elements to do that. Now, when you're quilting your area, I know it's a large area to quilt on your quilt. In the free quilting diagrams, I give thread suggestions because I know that that background area goes from like green to blue to yellow to pink, but just know that if you pick a neutral color, it's gonna look great. And make sure the whole thing's filled in and you're gonna do fine. Well, unfortunately today, Jessica's out of the office, so I haven't had her to be able to write down the questions. So if you have a question that I wasn't able to get to, please leave it in the comments below, I, or the comments after this live is over. I love to get on there from time to time and answer your questions. And I know for a fact that other quilters answer questions as well. So it's a great, great resource. Um, I did write down two questions before um, from the type chat, and I'm gonna address those and then I will bid you adieu. Um, Judy said that she's having trouble traveling on the bump back feathers, the custom feather, 
Um, is it easier to quilt towards me or away from me? Yes, it was the question. So first of all, the traveling on that bump back feather is that custom feather, you're quilting it and then you're kind of backtracking and come back. So yeah, it can be tricky, but I promise when you're done, you step back, you just see the feather, but I know that some of us don't like that idea. There are some workarounds, but I will tell you, if you're quilting, especially on a sewing machine, the hardest part sometimes is being able to see where that feather is. You've quilted it and now the machine is in the way. So when I demonstrate quilting the feathers, I usually start with the bottom towards me and I quilt it this way just because I think it looks better on the camera. But if you flip that feather around, if you start at the bottom up here, when you do your backtracking, you'll actually be coming towards yourself and you'll be able to see the path easier. So if you're struggling, try flipping the feather around or different, uh, moving it around a little bit, you might find it a little bit easier. Um, another option could be if you know you're going to put filler around your feather. I know this doesn't make sense, so I'll try to make a little uh, illustration for the next chat. If I know I'm going to put, let's say, a meander around my feather, I can do my first petal, meander till I get to the next one, and then come in. So I'll have like little bits of meander, but I can come back in later and fill them all in. So there are some options. I promise even, even if you become a expert at machine quilting, you're still going to have traveling that's not always perfectly on the line, and that's totally fine. Mine isn't always perfect, but you know, when you step back, all you see is that beautiful effect. Okay, Victoria also said that they've been drawing for fe the feathers on paper, but it doesn't look right. Still can't get that shape down. Should they try to go ahead and quilt it on fabric? And I'm going to say yes. When you're practicing drawing, it's not to improve the shape of your feather, it's to learn okay, how does this go together so that you can refine it on the quilting? So as long as you got the idea, I need the spine, I need the petals, go ahead and move to fabric. Um, during the, the type chat, I think it was last week, somebody mentioned um, my quilting looks way better than my drawing. <laughs> so that's definitely the case for me as well. Um, the drawing doesn't have to look good before you can start the quilting. You just need to know the path so that you can create those effects on your quilts. So um, thank you so much for hanging around next week. Even though I won't have a live chat, we'll be releasing a video. Um, we're going to be talking about border corners, and I'm going to show you how to take the feather and turn a corner with it. It's not difficult, but you know I've got some tips and pointers and some easier variations, and then we'll quilt that. And then I'll be back after Christmas for the final video in the series where I'll show you how to quilt the optional borders with feathers, but we'll talk about how to handle those areas. So lots of fun. And then I'll be back on the 30th for a live chat. So. I know it's a busy time of year, but we are finishing strong with this. So again, if you are busy, no worries. You can log on whenever it's convenient for you. Definitely don't want you to feel pressure on that. Well, I will see you next Tuesday with the next video in the Fabulous Feathers Free Motion Challenge. I hope you all have a very, very happy holidays, and I will be back for a live chat on the 30th. Until then, everybody, stay safe and happy, happy quilting.